Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show, your best friend in astronomy and science. Well, I hope one of them. Okay, so I've made a couple of videos on decent altazimuth mounts, so let's get to another one. Okay, so you know, the first one I've guys showed you was a Takahashi Atigo, okay? Uh, however, it's no longer available or it's discontinued. Then I showed you what I think is better like than an AZ-3 uh, type of thing. Uh, we looked at the Explore Scientific Twilight. I got something that looks like it's almost a duplicate, but is it better or just as good? It's made by SV Boney, so let's actually unbox it and let's get to it so first yes it looks almost identical could even be a copy of the twilight but is it so first thing let's okay let's take out all these accessories that are here slow motion controls and a handle i'm not sure the explorer scientific had a handle did it i only did that video about what few weeks back we could always take a look if we have to oh, this guy is really wedged okay and here we go so why don't we get rid of this box I don't think I'm gonna need the instruction manual okay, one thing I noticed right away uh, here's the head uh, but this guy is upside down so that I think they did it for uh, to fit in the box type of thing if they if this would have been supposed to be I'm, I'm almost positive this should be down here then it, they would need a bigger box more shipping so that's probably a good thing so I think you just have to flip that around Okay, so it's very similar to, so far it looks the same. Uh, it's a 3 8 thread down here, not a 1 quarter thread, which is much stronger, 3 8 thread. The Twilight has a plastic thing here with the uh, Allen keys that hide there with a, a little magnet. This one does not have that. But another thing I can tell right away, if you look at the Explorer Scientific, and I also just read this. It does not have this bar in the middle. It just has this big hole. And I heard from some people, when you're in this format, it's probably okay, the twilight. Uh, but maybe when it's on the 60 degree uh, angle, it has a little bit of flexure. I didn't notice that, but then again, I did not test mine for too long. So maybe that's something that they did notice. And it's actually... It's not thin, it's actually pretty thick. So maybe that's an improvement right there. Something else I noticed when I did flip this guy around, the Explore Scientific is also different because to change the angle, this one here has like a hex, hexagonal. So which means you can, it came like that, but let's say this is at 90 degree, like the Twilight, right? But you could just turn it if you want it on that degree. Another turn to be 90 degree or this way or that way. So um, the Explore Scientific, it actually has a couple screws here and you tilt it and then it screws in. So this is unique. So it's not a copied part of that. It has this middle brace. Um, and that's all I can see right now. Okay. 
slow motion control, so it looks exactly the same. And even the Explore Scientific has like that slot right there. This also has the same slot. I mean, it's no big deal to have a slot in the slow motion controls, but I actually do see something else that's different. I am positive the Explore Scientific only has this big nut to hold down. I don't know, so these are the safety nuts on either side. So I'm positive to explore scientific. You guys tell me, or I, I have to go back on that video. Does it have the locking nut and the safety nut or just a locking nut? But this one here, so it's another thing it has, is the locking nut and the two safety nuts. So it has three in total to hold it, which is kind of good, I guess. Uh, for extra safety. This kind of, the only thing is, it's really close. So it's kind of, you know, if you have big hands or if you're using gloves or anything, probably might get in the way. But besides that, uh, so th those are the differences I can see. Brace, the tilting of the axis is totally different. And it has three locking nuts up here instead of just one, maybe two, I don't remember. So that does look pretty good. Now feels, I would say feels similar. I don't have them side by side. So I can't say if one is stronger than the other, but it looks similar, but different. But I don't know if it's actually stronger or basically the same thing. Let's put this on a tripod. Okay guys, I don't know if you remember this mount. This was on the, remember the Takahashi Tigo? AZ mount. So that's what this is. It's a very nice to have this guy. So the reason why I got this guy, the SV Boney AZ mount, is because as you guys know, I have the Celestron Omni uh, AZ, which is a very lightweight AZ. And I bought it so I can take the six inch Skywatcher Heritage on an airplane. So that mount Mount and tripod is five pounds. You really can't ask for anything lighter for an airplane. So that's why I bought it. Uh, so when I did a star party, different trip, and I did a star party, and I was in a city, so I couldn't do any observing of the deep sky stuff. So we, I showed people Saturn and Jupiter and a few other things. Now with that tripod and mount, I wasn't able to go over 125 power. Now 125 power on the planets is almost okay but not great normally you would want at least 150 power for the planets to look decent big and decent detail and i was just short at about 125 power if i went any higher it would just be way too much vibration and you would have a saturn or jupiter that would just be you know moving in the eyepiece then there's no point so i had to keep the powers lower but if i had a more rock solid tripod and mount we probably could have pushed it to 150 175 200 power whatever the seeing would allow but uh most of the people liked it but it could have been a lot bigger you know what i mean it was kind of like a smallish medium size jupiter saturn so i thought maybe i can show you guys this mount because i showed you the explore scientific is this very similar and this i got on amazon and it came as a mount only with no tripod. You can buy whatever tripod you want, or if you have one that has a, a 3 8 thread to it, you can just use it on that. Um, anyway, so that's why I got this guy. So maybe when I'm at home and I want something more, a um, bit more sturdier, maybe this can come in handy and uh, we'll see how it goes. So, and also show you guys a video and, um, I've heard on cloudy nights, a few people ask if anybody has done this guy. And so far, I don't think so. So here we go. So uh, I, I like this handle here. So if you have your scope here, you can just put it, lock it down, and then now you can move it. I like the three locking nuts. The slow motion control is very similar. The design is very similar. And then if you want to tilt this guy, so the only thing maybe it doesn't have, I kind of like 
to explore scientific how this thing, maybe we could just use an elastic band because uh, it looks like this is the size that you're always going to use. The other size is here. These hex ones and the ones over here, it's just really to secure or to make sure it's tight. Once it's tight, you're probably only going to use this very big one to tilt and untilt uh, whatever angle you want. So would have been nice if they would have just had a magnet in this guy over here or somewhere where it could go. That would be uh, the only thing uh, that I can critique. Now, again, this is similar where if you can want to angle it, let me. So I just moved it from this position. It's straight up to, I don't know, whatever angle that is. Maybe I should double check and see what angle that is. I believe on the Explorer Scientific, one of you guys that watch me all the time said it was, you know, because hard to tell, I never measured it. I thought it was like a 45 degree angle and they told me, nope, that's a 60 degree angle. So I believe I have an angle meter right here. And we're just gonna double check just so you guys can know. So this is, 41 degree angle right here. I, mean, I don't know if you really would want to go any lower. That probably, I'm not sure that would make any sense. But let's see what other angles it does, just while we have this thing. Okay, so it's, it goes from a horizontal to a 41. And then the next one is a 90. And then it goes the opposite way, 45 and so I guess it's really only uh, three settings. It's good to know. Hopefully you guys enjoyed me unpacking this and showing you what the difference of this would be um, and what I think. It looks pretty solid to me, it looks pretty good. Uh, I probably would recommend it. If you, if you like to explore scientific, you might like this slightly better because again, uh, the handle, the extra brace here, I'm pretty sure it only had one um but here you have three so it's just a slightly better version but the explorer scientific did come out much earlier so this one of course you could improve on that's it guys like comment and subscribe if you know anybody that's getting into astronomy share the link with them if you don't mind if you're on the forums and somebody's maybe asked about this guy like i read maybe share my link and say hey joe jaguar did a review on this guy or whatever and again, I do have members uh, videos, one video a month, only for the members, uh, and it's only 99 cents. Anyway, guys, why not you? Why not me? Okay, guys, so here is an update to this mount. Uh, I just checked the manual. It says that it's capable of doing 10 kilograms, which is 22 pounds. That's actually quite a bit, I think. Uh, 22 pounds is like, you know, that six inch F8 Acromat refractor. That's about 21, 22 pounds. I'm not sure I would put that on here. The Takahashi TSA 102 is, it's a triplet. It's pretty heavy. Uh, diagonal, finder scope, heavy rings, 17 pounds. Now I could just tell 17 pounds, but you know what? There's a lot of play in where it mounts to. Uh, so I think most of this play here is where the head goes to the tripod. Maybe I can take a look at it uh, or maybe I can have it more secure. But anyway, as far as using something this heavy, I think it can be done, but they don't tell you that it's probably not gonna be rock solid. I probably wouldn't go more than 15 pounds, okay? Not 22 pounds. So they're probably extending or exaggerating, but you know what guys, every company does that. They always extend, they always exaggerate a bit more. Can it handle it? Probably. Now maybe I can uh, figure out a little bit better where the head meets the bottom of this tripod and that will probably take most of this jitter is from that. It's not from the mount itself. Uh, so. I would say it probably can do 15 pounds fairly well. Any more, it could, it could probably do it, but it's not gonna be rock solid. 
you know, but if you're looking for something portable, maybe it can also go much higher. Then of course, if you're looking at something really low, well, I don't know if you'd have it that high, but if you want to have something because you're looking at the sky, you know, type of thing like that. Uh, okay, but again, it's probably going to be less uh, solid. So uh, take that into consideration. Um, no, actually, now I can kind of see the bottom. Anyway, guys, that's it for... Oh, there we go. Okay, there. I was able to tighten it down a little bit more. And maybe if I do that... Okay, so let me loosen this guy. That's it, guys. I think up to 15 pounds maximum. And again, it won't be rock solid at 15 pounds but it probably can do it but it's a decent amount it looks like for me or for most of you guys okay 